Today on the Nerdy Gritty, we talk San Diego Comic Con 2019 and the announcements that came with it. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Nerdy Gritty, where we delve deep into the details of pop culture. I'm Fox. I'm Des. And I'm fixing my microphone. Yeah, I was wondering. Hold on. It, wait for it. Got this. Everybody out there, wait for it. Wait. That works. All right. So, okay. Pretend you like to make things and then sell them. Can you do me that for a moment wait, here? What wait, do you make and sell? Hold on. Give me, a few, me. give me a few minutes. I'm making... My own bath water. <laughs> uh, I'm making um, uh, uh, fancy birdhouses. Fancy birdhouses. You've got a few markets for them, but sure, yeah. in Portland, Weirdos it is and... easily the biggest market for fancy birdhouses in Portland. That could, be, that could be anything. Now, all of a sudden, Portland has put huge restrictions on how you can make your birdhouses. Duh. That Kate Brown running this, <laughs> running this, running this state into the ground. Am I right? What do you do about that? Um, f- find another market, go to another you state. Because here, here's here's the the corollary. Here's why I brought this up. Yeah, I don't want. Are we just talking politics today? China has recently been oh, cracking down very heavily yeah, 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 on yeah, the yeah, restrictions yeah. of their media. And a lot of that is coming down on video games. Yes. And what video games can be sold there. Now, if you guys don't know this, China is one of, if not the biggest video game market on the planet. Purely because of numbers. Yes. When you have 1.3 billion people and you're you're going to have, statistically, more gamers. And then what a lot of people don't understand is like the MMO market in Mm -hmm. China is garnormous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. World of Work or Warcraft, the movie made most of its money there it flopped in america it made like 80 percent. but it made all there. of it, it yeah. but it <laughs> made it's it was a huge success because of china because they love mmos and world of warcraft and such. right so the chinese government has recently uh over the past couple of years been slowly up like upping and upping up the restrictions on the type of things that can be in video games as like strict as you can't refer to the Chinese government in a negative way. Yeah, like I mean, like it's 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 par for the course for Chinese censorship. Like, it's yeah, not communist censorship in general. Well, yeah. Sure, sure, but yeah, specifically, you can't you have to you can't talk about spirituality, basically anything that doesn't go along with the, the their idea. Yeah, communist ideals, of right? Secularism and whatnot. And so, because of this, video game developers have been hitting this, especially those with a goal of hitting China really hard. This question of, okay, do I obey China's laws like, yeah. in every single way, shape, and form so that I can sell to that market? Or do I say, screw you, China. People are going to illegally buy my game probably anyway, yeah. and uh, I want to make the game I want to make. Well, if they're illegally buying it, you know, they're not the game developers. Yeah, I guess that's true. The problem is the profits of that. Yeah, it really yeah. comes down to an idea of like, uh ideals or like just morality i would think like do i in a sense prop up the communist ideals of the chinese government by censoring my game for them so i could sell it there or do i miss out on a huge market so i can release my game in its pure form that i want it to be released in you know what i would want to do i would want to make a game that is like Basically, almost propaganda game, but a hundred percent pure satire. It it doesn't break any laws and yeah. everything. It talks about how great the state is and how want, but like there's just so many thinly veiled. Here's the thing, like, though they would probably s- they would have they probably w- they're probably not like putting it through a machine that just says. I guess that's true. Like there's somebody there that's like, no, you can't not release that one. this. They're, no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like no, we we get it. <laughs> Man, like they're not idiots. I, I proposed this to Fox uh, a few days ago as like a main topic, but the bottom line that we both came to was all we can really say is that sucks. It do- I mean, yeah. I mean, what are you gonna do? It's that choice that comes yeah. down to it. And we could say, uh, I, I mean, there's so many things about this that we, as not game developers or businessmen, couldn't really say like this is what you should do, this is what you shouldn't. I mean, on the or I would, leaders of a sovereign country. Well, not anymore. <laughs> um but 
Yeah, I mean, I would want to say, oh, don't release it there. Don't support them. But how far do you go with that? Yeah. Like, Japan probably has things that, you know, we don't support. In the, their, I mean, America's government uh, has issues. And so what do you, what do you, how do you, how far do you go with releasing your game comp or your game in countries that are only doing things you and you uh, approve of and it's a it's a it's a hard hard line to cross yeah i think and i mean every developer is going to come up with their own bottom line sure for that. sure Some people are going to say dude we're in this for the money like right, well yeah. yes it's art and yes i want to make art but i also want to make money from my art so yeah sure for china yeah here's a, let me take out what you need to take out and I'll yeah handle, more other, some know? games are going to be easier to do like if you're overwatch like the <laughs> They're probably they're trying to stay pretty middle of the road on everything yeah. anyway, so that to reach the widest audience. But if you're uh, Far Cry Five, Far Cry Five, or <laughs> I don't know something by uh, Rockstar who intentionally tries to like make fun of governments and uh, or even like Red Dead, which has air, uh, you know ideas of spirituality in there, and right. uh, just what do you do? <laughs> yeah, and so it's an interesting situation that's going on right now. Gosh, there's just not much to say about nah, it. And that's yeah. why it wasn't I, the main topic. So yeah. Let, 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 let's get your guys' thoughts in the comments. You know, if you guys have any thoughts on that, go ahead and toss them in there. But it's just, it sucks. Anyway, Fox, what have you been up to, man? Uh, So I watched a short film, I guess you'd call it. I was, I was on Netflix just kind of randomly looking around and found something called, uh, dang it. I think, okay. I can't remember. I'm pretty sure the title, it, it has layers to it. So the title is Frankenstein's Monsters Monster, comma Frankenstein. <laughs> so nothing. Okay, Frankenstein's monster, like possessive yeah. monster. It's basically saying that Frankenstein's monster made a monster, made a monster, and named, and named it Frankenstein. So okay, here's what it is. It's like 32 minutes long. the The premise is David Harbor, who is uh uh Hopper. Oh, okay. Hopper, Sheriff Hopper or the new Hellboy. Uh, but not not like it's it's about David Ho or Harbor. It's about David Harbor, the actual person, so oh, to speak. Okay. He's playing himself, and he at the beginning talks about how he comes from a long line of actors. David Harbor, uh his father, David Harbor uh Jr., his grandfather, David Harbor the senior or the, the uh, senior, and you know, whatever. He's David Harbor the third, and he is making a documentary about a play that his grandfather made about Okay. So the whole thing is basically <laughs> just making fun of actors and plays and just um it's hard to describe because it kind of it has a lot of meta, uh, act uh, meta layers to it. Um, it's funny, kind of. Because I finished the Potter books recently, my wife and I have been going through the seven Potter movies. Yes, and it's been a while since I've watched them actually, especially mm -hmm. like one a night, like I have been doing. Um, and so it was interesting to come to the realization that. The first two movies aren't very good. Nah, no. Well, they didn't. They didn't give them any. Nobody cared. About, like they were just some dumb adaptation of some dumb children's some kids book. book. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like they weren't the the Potter books. They were made for the kids who read the books. Right. And so the first two movies, they're fine. I yeah. guess the plot holes are glaring. They're just dumb children. Yeah, they're and just they dumb are. children's. They're movies. dumb children's movies. And it's not until the third movie that they get they get really good. Yes. in my opinion. They start and ramping it up. Um, you been playing anything? Yeah, I finished Prey. I finished the oh, game finally. Prey. Um How many that, hours that take? uh probably 22, 23. Okay, so not ridiculous amount. Most yeah, a little maybe a little more than that. No, it was surprisingly long for what I uh for the kind of game it was. Mm -hmm. Um here's the problem though. So you have all these hub areas essentially and you move from one to one between the other, the load times between them are a solid minute minute and a half. Speaking of um great games i've been playing i don't know if you heard of it it's called slay the spire um i'm at about 300 hours played in slay the spire but i've been playing a lot of slay the spire because you can stop listening now because i have i've told you about this i haven't told these guys about this though there's a mod for slay the spire that lets you be sailor moon i'm pretty sure you've told them with about sailor moon themed cards uh 
Yeah, speaking of games uh, that are the same but with a skin of a different ga- a, a thing over it, we played Cadence of Hyrule. Yeah, we did. Which oh, is which is so crypt, much fun. crypt of the Necrodancer, but Zelda. Man. Um, it's I mean it's different in some ways. You don't have that over. You don't have the overworld in Crypt of the Necrodancer. You're just in a dungeon, mm. and you just go level to level. Um, but it was so much fun. Man, it was so much fun, and then it was so much fun. With all of that flavor of Legend of Zelda, which sure, you and yeah. I both love, yeah, and so it elevated it for both of us. So I have been continuing to read. It's taken me a long time to read through Killing Joke because mm-hmm. it's just so poorly written. Yeah, it really is. I have been. I, I keep talking about this. I keep mentioning it. I've been reading War of the Realms. Here's yeah. why I keep mentioning it. The whole thing is like sixty five different issues. That's if you do all of the like all of the tie ins and everything which I have. I have yeah. two issues that I ha- I don't have yet. Um and I'll get them this weekend. Um but so it it takes a while to read. Uh and so I have technically only read 3 of the actual main series. I'm only like halfway through the War of the Realms main series. All right. I think it's about time that we get down to the nerdy gritty. Agreed. But first, we want to let you guys know that if you're listening to this right now, that means that just before this, you listened to a shorter edited version of our kind of intro discussion. Uh, the meat of our podcast is never edited. You will always hear our actual conversation, but that's usually about half to two thirds of what we talk about. Yeah. There's usually a pretty good chunk of time that we spend just talking about things we've been doing, books we've been reading, comic books, uh, video games we've been playing, things like that. For example, I cut last week down... From about 35, 40 minutes to about seven minutes. Yeah. You got a very small taste of all the topics we talked about, but nothing really of like to the to the actual conversation. If you want to really dig into that and hear these things, uh, the best thing to do is head over to our Patreon and become a patron. Yeah. Uh, it's as little as a dollar a month to become a patron and get all the Patreon exclusive content to get the unedited version of our podcast. It's the five or ten dollar a month uh, um Patreon. tears tears Thank tears you. tears uh for that and uh, we also really appreciate your support for these things if you guys are doing it it means that you really like our content and you really appreciate what we do and that's a great way to show us what, uh, that you appreciate that so for those of you guys who can do that thank you so much if maybe you can only do the dollar one, if it's not for the podcast, know that there's a lot of Patreon exclusive content or Patreon first content that we're going to be putting out there uh, and that we do put out there. But if all you can do is listen, share, comment, respond, all of that stuff, uh, we love that too. So thank you so much for your guys' support. But let's continue on. So just recently, San Diego Comic Con 2019 had its week, had its. It was Thursday through Sunday. Yeah. And ended for us as recording four days ago. Four days ago. And some things happened. One yeah. I mean, yeah. San Diego Comic Con's become a fairly big deal in the last couple decades. What we've been talking about, Vox and I, is just how little it's about actual comics yes now. yeah it's not i mean i'm sure there are lots of comics there yes oh, they, they made yes. a big announcement about all the x-men comics that are coming up marvel did which is a big deal because house of x and powers of x which are a like universe shaking as far as the x-men go de- uh event right now and mm-hmm. so that's a big deal but nobody cares about that <laughs> <laughs> unless you're me who possibly might read those uh nobody is looking for the big comic announcements coming out of this out of right. san diego comic-con So uh, we're going to talk about some of the announcements, some of the things that happened here. Uh, We're probably going to say, I say, let's save the obvious and best for last. That's Marvel's announcement. Oh, okay. Sure. That's that's a bit, well, yeah. On them bones. Sure. And that could almost be a podcast in and of itself, but. But no, we don't want to do that. Yeah. There are other things that I think are worth talking about. Yeah. And that look really cool. Like first and foremost, the thing that I want to bring up here is the Snowpiercer series yeah. that's coming out here. Yeah, it's an interesting thing to adapt. So, I don't know if you guys watched the movie Snowpiercer. It's very good. Yeah, we've talked about it before. Actually, just a few weeks ago, you watched it. Right. We talked about it. And I was surprised at how little like notoriety it got for having number one Chris Evans in it, who's like a yes. best actor right now from Captain America and Marvel stuff. It's a Korean movie. Oh, is it really? Yes. I didn't know that. It's a Korean movie, and they hired Chris Evans to be in it, as well as a few other American actors. Yeah. But Chris Evans is the big one, you know? 
Um, so that happens from time to time. You had that great wall movie where they hired Matt Damon. Right. That's a Chinese movie. It just got, you know, big, um, you know, American release, a big American release. But yeah, so it's a South Korean movie that um, got put on Netflix a few years ago. Mm-hmm. And it's got a cult following, I think, at least over here. And it's got a good meta score. And yeah, like, it's a great movie. It's a good movie. But it didn't yeah. have an American release, which no. is, yeah. So because it got a cult following here and because people enjoyed it so much, uh, they've decided to make a series out of this. Yeah, yeah, which is interesting. Yeah, I'm not sure how that's going to go. It's a very literally contained story. Yeah. Um, and And it just feels like their only way to do it is just to stretch it out. Like just to take each scene... And make an episode of so it. So many train references that we could <laughs> Wait, go right now. you stretch now. out trains? I guess no, you stretch out. No, I'm saying, like, it's going to be hard to keep it on the rails, you yeah, know? Yeah, no, it's just got really a one-track story. <laughs> and, uh, no, it's a great story. It's a good revolution story with a cool, unique uh, setting. And, right. Uh, it, the movie was really, like, had really cool, like, filming techniques and moments in it. So, it's either going to... I feel like it's destined to kind of not be great. And, again... This is why I thought of the pun, but literally, not literally, genuinely, I think it's going to be hard to kind of keep on the rails. Like, yeah. if you want to keep this going, there's only so much you can do with a train, which is why I think a movie was a really good plot for that, like really good situation sure. for that. But unless you're going to get outside of this train, it's going to end up like 12 Angry Men, where everything's shot in one, in one set. Like, Well, yeah, I mean, they could... And if we could speculate here a little bit, they could, like, I guess we spoiled Snowpiercer a little bit, but they could get to the end of the movie and instead of what happened, try to then... I mean, you could just say they could try explore the exterior of the train. No, no, no. No, no. Well, sure. Absolutely, they could try that. The plot of the movie, like... Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. They would die immediately. Or not immediately, but eventually. Yeah. But, you know, what I'm saying is, like, it's not we we take out the bad guys and blow up the train and get off the train. It's we take out the bad guys and now we're going to make an equal society oh. and make the, the snow piercer a place for e- for everyone. And you know, like you just keep going. I, I feel like it's a three season or max. Something I could see them doing to kind of stretch things out is go JJ Abrams style and have like flashbacks to the past. That's a good point. Yeah, lost style. Yeah, and just have a lot of. You know work. what? If they don't do that now, you t- you mentioned that that'd be weird. <laughs> like that would be more interesting to yeah. see like how they got to here see yeah how the, the how society the fell and actually that'd be pretty interesting now. <laughs> Man, I'm a little more excited for it <laughs> if that's a thing. But yeah, it's it's an interesting choice. I think it's a cool choice. I think largely it's it's benefit will be more people will watch the movie mm-hmm. and the movie is really good and deserves more uh, attention. Um. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring one up. Yeah, go ahead. Um, uh, The Witcher. Oh yeah. The trailer, the big trailer for The Witcher came out. The Netflix series that's coming out by the end of the year, which I'm excited about. Um, it looks entirely whatever. It really does. <laughs> I am a huge Witcher fan. I have read all the books, all the short stories, played all the games. I I basically ha- have experienced everything that The Witcher has to offer. And this like definitely has Witcherish things in brief flashes and characters, fine, whatever. But the actual like this this definitely wasn't a story trailer, right? This was a this is a fantasy story, for fantasy show trailer to give you an a, idea of the tone and the kind of general content. Yeah, it it was a really safe trailer. Very much so. It was generic fantasy. It, it was super high fantasy. Yes. Really. You're like, a here. You you know this guy. He's a monster hunter. And then there's the child of destiny. Even though they don't exactly. actually they don't use those words though. Cause child of destiny is a very specific term for the Witcher. They just say <laughs> this girl is the most powerful person. And like I it, to me I was like cool. It got me neither disappointed or right. excited. It's just like yeah, that's the Witcher. I, I watched it, Who uh, somebody who doesn't know much about The Witcher at all, I watch it, and I was like, okay, oh, fine. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. there's It's it's still, for me, I, I am of the belief, like, it's okay if it's bad. That doesn't take away from the games or the books, so whatever. Right. It's just going to be a crappy show. It's a disappointing thing because there's so much they could do with it, but I'm hoping that it goes a certain way. I want it to be very episodic, as in, like, 
not necessarily directly connecting every episode and kind of just being like short stories each time. Oh, okay. Because that's even the novel saga, like the saga novels are very much like that. Interesting. They, they don't often just like tell a straightforward narrative. And so I'm really hoping they kind of do that. I'd be fine if there was no overarching narrative and it was just a bunch of short stories about this guy who hunts monsters and interacts with these people and, you know, things like that. That's not what it's going to no, be. No, it won't. That will be too weird, that for, especially for a risky show like this. Yeah. That, that'd be like a season four thing or something. But um, it looked fine. Yeah. I, I suspect that as we get closer to it, they will show more. Yes. And they'll try and build up a little more hype for it. But... Until then, I think that they're just trying to play it safe yeah. and make sure that people, because especially because the amount of backlash that can come from from bad trailers, ahem, cough cough Sonic, um, <laughs> the, the amount of like vitriol that can come from that, you kind of need to play it safe these days. When a little bit, yeah. yeah. I will say that Henry Cavill, I think, is a good choice. Um, I mean, it doesn't matter, but he kind of looks like uh, certain things matter. His white hair, I guess, but he looks like Geralt should and whatever um we'll see <laughs> yeah we'll see how it goes we'll see uh on notes of things that we are particularly interested in you with the witcher and me with batman uh the harley quinn series is one the, that was announced is that a series i think so i thought it was just a movie uh no i think it's gonna oh, be okay. a cartoon series yeah so let me find it here uh but there is a harley quinn either movie or series i, I thought it was animated yeah animated one but it is supposed to be in kind of the thread of uh, a la Rick and Morty, Futurama. I got really, a, a Deadpool vibe yeah, Deadpool, from it. Deadpool, um, irreverence, and R-rated comedy. Yes. And it looks funny. I'll say that. It looks really funny. And I just, I worry how far they're going to want to take that and how much of ridiculousness they're going to do for the sake of ridiculousness compared to how much story they're how much you want care to include yeah. deadpool is ridiculous but the stories are like you genuinely care yes. especially the second one yeah i mean there's like pretty standard but you still care about what's happening so yeah uh, i it's probably something that i won't watch like i don't care about harley quinn that much if it's a movie i'll watch it that's for sure i guess if it's a series um it's all gonna be it's on it's gonna be on the dc universe subscription service so i don't have that and i'm definitely not gonna pay for it just to watch that so even if it's a movie or a show so it's not something i'm really caring about let's see i'm looking there's a harley quinn animated series but that doesn't look like what this is gonna be Mm. all right i don't know either way either way Harley quinn tv series okay cool cool so We'll see how it goes. Again, it's one of those that I laughed at some of the things in the trailer and it looked really funny, but also there's the opportunity to actually kind of take it seriously. Like there's some good content that yeah. you could pull from Harley Yeah, Quinn. no, there's always the, the possibility that there's kind of like the trailer is all funny, weird, crazy stuff and the show is actually much more interesting. Right. But that doesn't happen very often. No. No. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Um oh there that's another thing i want to bring up i just remembered speaking of dc uh watchmen yeah the hbo series that's coming out soon they released another big trailer for it um i am very very intrigued by it i before this trailer i was worried i was cautiously optimistic i'll say well there was because th- this one had a lot of stuff from a trailer that had been previously released but this has a little bit more Maybe I didn't see that trailer. No, maybe you hadn't seen it. Yeah. Yeah. But I was just worried with what they were going to do. How are they going to go? This was the second trailer. So, yeah. Yeah. So it seems uh, that it's much farther. It's much farther in the future. Right. um, From the original, like I would say, maybe even like modern day. From the original story was set in an alternate history, but in the 80s. Um, And I'm guessing. That it's the same timeline, and this is set right now, or maybe even in the future, um, based on just certain characters with their age, how aged they look, like uh, Ozymandias and right. whatnot. But um, I love the trailers, the trailer itself, because it did not just give you a story. Like, here's what the story is, because if it's a simplistic story, 
then it's not Watchmen. <laughs> like Watchmen is is steeped in in uh, intrigue, nuance yeah. and intrigue and and uh, complex character studies and all that. And if you're able to just say, well, it's about Doctor Manhattan coming back and fighting bad guy, you're like, that's it's nope. not Watchmen anymore. Nope. This is a superhero movie, and that's not what Watchmen ever has ever been or a superhero show. Um, so that's why I was I'm very intrigued by it because it definitely seems to be carrying um the tone it has a lot of action in the trailer i don't expect very much action in the actual show what what, what watchmen the graphic novel and the movie were really about was politics it was a, is a, pol- a political show um yeah in large part or a political story in large part yeah right and how to handle those politics you know like the whole thing is the the cold war was escalating and the politics of that and sure and you had yeah it. you had this superpower called dr manhattan right and, how people interact with that and and so this one seems to be keeping up with that theme yeah this seems to be about the politics of superheroes a lot of politics superheroes, but also mm-hmm. like trust in those who are supposed to be watching over us right right who who watches those people who are watching over us yeah uh the the, the trailer if go pause this and go watch it right now yeah okay you just watched it um because <laughs> it's just a trailer but there's what really like sold it for me is there was one part in which they said criminals have been targeting the families of police officers. So police officers have been going out with masks with masks on. And then later there's another part in which uh, like I'm guessing FBI or somebody, a lady comes up and says, how do you tell the difference between a vigilante and a cop with a mask on? Somebody says, I don't know. She says, neither do I. And the whole point here is there's that's really good points on either side. Right. You know, the, the cops with the masks on, that's kind of what vigilante does have does anyway. having a badge change anything right if you or, or if you are uh you know part of a corrupt system then should uh, are vigilantes any different than you you know right. like how do you how do you decide what is right and what is wrong and how you should police yourselves but at the same time if you're being anonymous to protect your family that right makes sense see yeah, yeah absolutely but that's what vigilantes were doing right they just didn't have a badge oh man so, so <laughs> again there's really good political intrigue yeah. to this that i'm really excited to see them explore especially because at least watchmen i can't guarantee for this but the movie and the graphic novel were both really well written yeah and like really well explored on different sides of the matter of the philosophy of yeah, it. Yeah, the, the movie did a fairly decent job of adap- adapting it. Yeah, and so um, I, I really hope that this has the same sort of like philosophical feel to it as well. I am wondering if it's going to at all connect or tie into Doomsday Clock, but I don't expect it to. Yeah, yeah. So one of the ones, I mean, we've been talking about things that actually look pretty good, but one of the ones that I'm, I guess... Oh, I'm there's a, a several things that I want to say. They're dumb and bad. I'm not a Star Trek fan, and so uh, this one is... is not really for me, but Star Trek Picard. Uh, first of all, it's card. It's called Star Trek Picard. That's right. that's stupid. That's literally just. <laughs> that's literally just. Hey, this one's got Picard in it. Come watch it, nerds. Like, <laughs> that's essentially what they're doing. It's not. If it's about Picard, then they're missing the point of what Star Trek with Picard always was. Right. Like, and so that's just ob- like an obvious misstep right off the bat, and kind of a hey, this is not going to be great. Um, but yeah, it just, uh, I have watched one episode to be clear here of, uh, discovery is the very first one. They put it out for free. And based on that one, I was like, Nope, <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> this one just looks like the star Trek movies, but a TV show, the new movies. Right. And I am not a big fan of the new movies. I think they are dumb and simplistic. They're fine action adventure movies in space. They are they're, not they're good. They're fun movies. You don't like that. They're star Trek. They movies. are not good star Trek movies. Right. Um, but they are good action adventure movies in space with the care with the characters from Star Trek. Right, right. Uh, and this like Discovery was that, uh, but stretched out into a show. And this just looks like that with Picard now. Like, I don't know. I think especially with Picard, they may try and go back to their philosophy roots. <laughs> They're really thinking. They about very well could, and I'd be humanity. shocked. And I'm not gonna say like, hey, if you do, good on you. Maybe I'll. Maybe I'd try to watch it somehow. Yeah. Like, I'd definitely have to see good reviews from people that care about that kind of stuff. But uh, the problem is Alex Kurtzman is involved. I don't know if you know who Alex Kurtzman is, but he's a writer. Alex Kurtzman and Robert Orsi uh, were a writing duo for a good long while. Let me give you a, a, a selection of their uh, their credits. Amazing Spider-Man 1. 
Amazing Spider-Man 2. Oh. Star Trek. Star Trek Into Darkness. Mm-hmm. Not Star Trek 3, which was the best one. <laughs> uh, 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 they are... Oh, dang it. What, was, what else were they involved in? Not great things. No. No, no, no. They have a very poor... Oh, uh, the new Mummy movie. Oh. I think that was just Alex Kurtzman. I think he Oof. directed that actually. <laughs> uh, yeah. So not a great. Yeah, they're bad. They're bad writers. Like they make bad scripts. Uh, the only reason why Star Trek and Star Trek like was because uh, that they were actually like what made them decent was that J.J. Abrams directed them, and he's a great director of right. standard, you know, exciting action movies. So, um, yeah. So Alex Kurtzman is involved, which to me that's a red flag, and I'm not going to watch. <laughs> No, thank you, sirs. I just off to the side, a real quick thing about the mummy. I did recently find out that a lot of people in the industry blame Tom Cruise for that because apparently he had written into the contract that he had personal writers that could change any of his scenes or dialogue if he wanted them to. And okay. so a lot of what they wanted was changed by Tom Cruise's personal writers. Mm. I just didn't know it was, that a was a weird thing. movie for Tom Cruise. He played a character that he generally doesn't play, hmm. like Sassy Adventure Man. Usually he's like serious action guy, like right. you know, spy or uh, soldier or yeah. you know, officer, Top Gun too. officer man, you know, things like that. That was he. He sh- it should have been like uh, Chris Pratt or something, mm-hmm. where he's like much more interesting. <laughs> but anyway, uh, back to this. Or funny. The the preview that they showed this preview, it's like the the vineyard and picard wine and yeah, the a drawer end, with the parts of where we left him the last time we saw him that's where he was he yeah, had, yeah that's where he retired sort of stuff. but it didn't look like there was any action in the trailer really oh well, there was there's plenty uh, to me there was a lady doing kung fu kicks but and... to me what was what left me the most was his conversation like he was just talking with people hey, about things i am all for <laughs> a, a new star trek that's actually good star trek i just don't expect it to yeah be. that would yeah. be shocking to me i just like patrick stewart a lot yeah sure yeah he's good at things go back to being a nazi in green room that was a great movie <laughs> uh other things that look kind of dumb or bad i have no interest in top gun 2 no i don't care I, n- I don't think i've ever seen top gun 1 but i know the general things about it uh beach volleyball jets bar and this just the trailer would just seemed like that's what this is like it just seemed like hey here's the same movie is an 80s a good 80s movie in as much as the 80s made good movies which was a lot of them are it was a good example of an 80s movie yeah is what you're saying okay that's a good way to say that it's a good example of an 80s movie where a lot of montages a lot lot of montages a lot of masculine tough guy very much so all that stuff and you know the renegade hero yeah 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 yeah. like that today a movie like that would be fine it's going yeah it's gonna it's gonna feel outdated yeah for sure yeah um so nah, i'm good no thank you yep um yeah what what else did you see that you were just like uh whatever um because that's probably of most of There's what i more that looks good that i want yeah talk let me talk about, about it here talk about it yeah uh the boys i have no idea what that is and i have had no interest in looking it up what it is except for the fact that carl urban is in it and i love yeah. carl urban so so the boys is about a small saturday time... what saturday it's for the boys is that it's, a, a it's a meme. It, no, okay. just oh, yes. Got it. Anyway, so the boys is about like a small time super heroine and she. Ooh, super heroine. I could, <laughs> I could go for, times more powerful I could go for some of that heroine. right now. She uh, becomes very, very popular and they want to include her in the really big super team and only arrives to find out that it is very much a boys club uh, and that the whole superhero scene is actually like very toxically masculine and Carl Urban is a former hero who like dropped out of it because he's like I don't even want to deal with that garbage anymore and it's one part it's like sort of like the tick superhero comedy sure uh you know where how do these superheroes deal with their normal stuff yeah and on the other side it's a very much like uh, social commentary political type yeah. thing and i think it looks good actually i'm really curious to see it and uh to it's on amazon so i'll be able to watch it cool yeah, yeah. um i'm looking at a list right here 
of other things. I mean, there was the West World, which I've never watched it, so right. I don't should care. We just, should we just move on to Marvel? Uh, I feel like there's something else that I'm forgetting, and I'm trying to. Oh, Walking Dead should die. Yes. Walking Dead has become Walking the zombie. The is it about? Dead, yes. <laughs> uh, because Walking Dead season ten trailer and a, like a very small teaser for a movie was an, like shown. Stop. Yeah. Stop doing Stop that. It. You, you you've you're doing the your same mojo, guys <laughs> uh let's see there's only so much you can do and you've done all of it we learned that magic the gathering the animated series is going to be focused on chandra and jace right which is interesting i guess still really wondering what it's gonna what the actual like how it's gonna look like what is it gonna be about is it gonna yeah. be about people casting spells or is it i don't know i mean the books have done a really good job of digging into the uh, story and characters the the planeswalkers and the the gate watch and things like that i hope that they focus on that and the whole referencing magic and referencing spells and things like that is is in the background of the genuine good character building that can come of it two more things okay that i've got and then Go if ahead. you don't have anything we should move to marvel but two more things uh terminator dark fate stop also stop yes <laughs> none of them have been i mean I, I liked uh terminator salvation not in the sense that it was a great movie but it was something different in the terminator series right because one and two are very much similar movies they're essentially the same thing um but they're both great and and two i liked because the female lead was super cool Well, sure yeah, yeah. it was a logical progression that like this character realizes, oh, I have to survive. Yeah, you know. And the first movie didn't like the first movie is just about them killing one robot. So it's not like like she knew about the D Day, the Doomsday, or whatever, uh, whatever it was called, Judgment Day. Judgment Day. But they didn't stop that. They were just like, oh, and she's like, okay, I have to survive now. So she becomes action right. woman. Second movie, it's great, logical. Like things happen. You actually care about this kid and his fa surrogate father figure. Really cool. Third movie was garbage. It was a piece of junk. Um, it also just did the same thing as the second movie. Uh, it was almost literally the same plot of the guy who was the bad guy is now a good guy. And he's right. protecting John Connor. The fourth movie was more interesting because it was actually in the future. Salvation. Yeah. And you had like, and then the fifth one was utter garbage. Like puke on the screen. Uh, the sixth one just looks like the same thing again. Like, guys, stop making the same movie again. Right. Do something interesting. Um, so stop with that. And then it chapter two. Did you see the trailer for that? I did, and it looks a lot like the first one. The the uh, did you see chapter it, it one no, or it? I don't is, watch. Is bad. Movies. Is bad. Was it? Yeah, it's got this really big uh popular following. I think because it's a scary you know plan. I'm really not sure why. Probably just be clown. just because of yeah, probably just because of Pennywise. Pennywise. Yeah. Um, but it's a dumb movie. Like it's just a bunch of jump scares again. Like the plot is kids are running away from clown. Clown shows up across the field and looks kind of creepy, and then the kids run away. Like that happens over and over again. It's the same thing. Like it's really dumb. <laughs> if the clown wanted to kill them, he could have done so so fast. Like these. Anyway, okay. so chapter two just looks movies. dumb. Also, the very first it movie, the it was mini series on, yeah, was it a mini the original was two part a two part series oh. on TV. Yeah, I, I probably saw it as a collected like maybe yeah. movie then. But anyway, it ended up being an alien that fed on fear. That's the book, right? And yeah. So it's actually even weirder than that in the book. That but. would make sense as to why it, he's just standing there scaring kids. But here's what I'll sense. say about... He's not that in this new one. About so. old Pennywise versus new Pennywise. Tim Curry looked like a clown. He looked like a like Bozo the Clown yeah. on TV. Like, like if you were going to a party and you saw Tim Curry's Pennywise, you'd be like, oh, hey, there's a That's clown That's weird here. nowadays because people don't do that anymore. Right. But he looks like a TV clown. Right. And then he was doing creepy things. And yes. And it's that, like, tainting of innocence that yeah. made him really creepy. Yeah. If you look at Pennywise today, you're like, well, that's a scary that's an clown. evil that that's a horror movie clown yeah, right there. I don't want him near I'm, me or my yes, children. Yes, why? I am afraid of that immediately. Yes, there, there. It's just playing to your fear, not psychologically. Again, yes, the painting of innocence in there, and I, I don't like the new Pennywise. Yes. Guys, jump scares are surprising. 
They are not scary. Right. That's you not didn't fear. expect it. <laughs> doesn't mean it's you should be afraid of it. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, bad. Don't watch it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's all I got. So let's talk let's about talk Marvel because that's obviously the big deal. Like. They they just dropped all the knowledge on everybody. All of the bombs. All of the yep. We all been we were bombed by Marvel. So they hit us with Phase Four. Yes. They hit us with their Disney Plus TV series, which is all part of Phase Four, also. Right. And they hit us with an animated series that's which is going to be coming. Also out. part of Phase Four, which well, is not canon, obviously. But right. Yeah. I consider Phase Four the canonical stuff. That's I guess be that's happening. true. Yeah, yeah. So it's crazy to me how much they did and how far they went. But let's talk about these. Let's, let's talk about some individuals here. Right, right. Let's you talk about to... shows first. Okay, shows let's, first. Let's still ramp it up a little bit here. So we got Loki. We got WandaVision. We got, uh, which is yeah. Look, we'll get to it. We got uh, uh, the Winter Soldier and Captain or and Falcon or whatever it's called. The, Fa- the Falcon and Winter Falcon, Soldier. Winter Soldier, yeah. And then uh, what What If is also a TV show. Was there another TV show? Oh, Hawkeye. Yes. And there was Hawkeye, which I'm down for all of those. Yes. <laughs> I mean, sure, uh, WandaVision's a weird title, but I'm really curious about it. Man. I thought Vision was straight up dead. He was powered by the, the, the stone, so what happened, you know? Right. And I'm really interested to see where that comes, especially since Scarlet Witch is apparently going to be a very lar- play a very large role in Phase Four. Right. So, like, I'm look. Here's what I'll say overall: they, the, I am by, I am getting Disney Plus. Yeah. Like they, Woo, I mean, just me. I probably won't watch anything on it except for the Marvel shows, but it's only seven dollars a month, so to me, that's well worth it. I have been very seriously considering starting a podcast with my wife called Val Disney Plus. <laughs> in which in which we just watch disney plus things and talk about it <laughs> i really want this to happen i'm still trying to convince her about it she's, that'd be she's on the fence minus <laughs> yeah okay that'd be pretty great um but yeah so i'm i think i'm most looking forward to uh i don't know each one of them has like an intriguing idea to them to me i'm of the tv shows i'm definitely most excited for the falcon and winter soldier yeah because i think that there can definitely be a a friendship that's also kind of like difficult with the Bucky thinking, why did he choose you? I'm fully expecting, uh, uh, yeah, like a combative buddy cop show. Yeah, but not in a dumb way. Well, yeah, I'm thinking, I'm thinking like, uh, like Lethal Weapon. Yeah, Lethal Weapon wasn't dumb. That was a great movie. Yeah, the first um, one. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm expecting that kind of thing where it's, you know, they go on missions for Shield or for whatever the organization is, or maybe just for the UN or whatever, and conflict with each other and you know they yeah they have different styles of things and i definitely think and also am looking forward to growing the character of falcon yeah he didn't get a lot of screen time yeah yeah um i'm guess like a big thing will be like does he feel worthy of being captain america right he, you know this is still cap shield and eventually he says i'm gonna go get my shield and everybody else is like oh he just he called it his own shield like yeah. that kind of thing so that that'll be interesting loki is supposed to be i'm guessing it's going to be a very comedy focused supposed to be him kind of in various moments in history just kind of is messing that what with things that's what i've heard okay now i don't think that's been confirmed the but logo, i i love that concept the logo communicates that to me it's yeah it's gonna be it's, wonky it's gonna be off kilter right the different, different kinds of logo. different ideas every time it's not necessarily yeah right. so that's gonna be interesting uh but as far as the one i want to watch the most right now is what if yes yeah simply because I want to see like Marvel movies and whatever MCU stuff just with a slight twist. So yeah. yeah, if you never read what if comics, they're essentially like, we wanted to write, this was an idea we had, or this is a weird thing. Let's just write a one shot comic about it. I have a few. What ifs? <coughs> like one was, um, what if Wolverine never got an adamantium in his skin? Yeah. Um, what if Archangel never left apocalypse? Yeah. Um, what else was there? There were a few of the old what ifs that I read back in the nineties. There's there's a whole lot of them. And yeah. you know, oftentimes it's what if this person was actually a bad guy? Right. What if Thor was never worthy? You know, just like what would happen if this was kind of the thing? And I'm really excited to see that. Uh, because as uh, first, uh, it'll be the first animated, uh, can like show in the MCU. Um, but also it'll have like voice actors from everything. 
like all the same voice actors or at least a good majority of them they showed a cast of like 25 different voice actors who are all just playing their characters still which that's gonna be really cool we're gonna yeah. we're gonna talk about in the future like yeah. our ideas i don't want to talk about it we're not gonna talk about right it now, now but in the future we're gonna talk about our what if what, what if, if ideas. ideas um so just to hit on the other ones yeah real quick here the other two um wandavision i don't uh, first of all it's a terrible name it's a terrible name <laughs> It makes it feel, and the logo is leaning into it, like a 50s thing. Now, that's a thing that they've played on in the comics. Oh, really? Yeah, there's there's a kind of an iconic one, or a Vision uh, cover of, uh, I, I, I've not read it, but it's like him, like, with his Vision family, and they're all robots, but it's like, oh, I've seen fun 50s, like, yeah. just standing at the outside their house. Now, that's probably not going to have anything to do with it, but, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm very, like, what is that going to be? Because WandaVision is inherently kind of goofy. That, right. It's like a pun, basically. <laughs> and so is it going to be a goofy show or what? Like, I'm really interested. We'll see. Yeah. Hawkeye is the one that I am the least intrigued about. To me, now, I feel like that's going to be the most straightforward of he, all of them. My guess, it's going to be about him and his daughter. Oh, interesting. About him training his daughter. Interesting. Don't, it's, she was. I'm pretty sure she was. What was she named in the in the movies? Because typically, Ho- the movies? next Hawkeye is... Yeah. Remember at the beginning of Endgame? Oh, like her name name. I thought her... you meant like as a hero. Because she, she becomes a hero. Well, she does. But yeah. also, Hawkeye is typically Kate Bishop. That's a different character, though. That's who the Hawk... Hawk... There are two Hawkeyes in current Marvel right. comics. Okay. One of them is Clint Barton. He's part right. of the West Coast Avengers. We'll and the, the other one is Kate kate uh bishop got it i see what you're saying and so but either way i'm guessing it'll be about him training his daughter right to become the new hawkeye interesting that's my guess okay all right okay to the movies to the movies black widow yep the eternals shang chi shang chi and the legend Legend of of the the ten Ten rings um Doctor Strange. It. No, Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange and, and, the, and, the, multiverse Mount, and the multiverse of madness. Uh, and Thor, Thor Love, Love and Thunder. Thunder. Uh, I love both of those. I I love them. Okay. The name Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness and Thor Love and Thunder, I kid you not, to me, scream roller coaster. They very theme much park. feel like a, a yeah, I'm at Six Flags right now. Yes. And, yeah. The Six Flags. They very much feel like that. I love on, it. Um, the Doctor Strange ride, Multiverse of Madness. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. It feel, well, it, it feels like a Disneyland type thing where you just sit. It's like soaring over California where you're just watching it. Or, or Star Wars. What is it? Star Wars Adventures. Star Tours. Or, Star Tours, yeah. You're just like sitting there watching a thing happen and the thing moves. Man. But here's the thing. I love both those titles. <laughs> I want these movies to get weird. I want them to get strange. Pun intended. Uh, and to just be ridiculous because comics are ridiculous and they've shown that they can do ridiculous things like Ragnarok was pretty ridiculous right. in what happened and it was a great movie. It was wonderful. So do more of that. Why not? It's going to be more memorable that way. Thor Love and Thunder. Uh, let's start. It's the the one that's farthest away on the time, sure. timeline here, but let's start with that because we're already talking about it. Um, Thor Love and Thunder is what I think one of the, uh, of these has the most potential to be really awesome. Yeah. Because number one, Taika Waititi's back. Yeah. He, yeah. Lake was, Titicaca is back. That's his name. And uh, he did a great job with uh, Ragnarok. Mm-hmm. Um, sophomore films, it, like. This uh, isn't like, his sophomore film. No, but like when you make one, making a second one is always tough to make it as good because everyone's going to want to compare it to the first well, one. Well, sure, sure. So that'll be tough for him. But what I'm really intrigued about is. Jane Foster Jane, Thor. Jane Thor. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been confirmed that Natalie Portman will return as Jane Foster. Goddess it's confirmed of in Thunder. in their announcement. This yeah. was not a uh, not speculation. Right. She will become Thor. Yes. Which, if you don't know, has been a massive story arc in the Thor. Like Thor just recently became Thor, Thor again. again yeah. Like very re- like last year, she became Thor like six years ago, I don't know if five it was that or six. Long, but yeah, yeah, like many years ago, she was Thor for a good long while. Yeah. So that I, I, I of course, you, you see on the internet, oh, it's just a SJ, SJW 
you know, feminist propaganda. You're like, no, it's shut your mouth. This is the comics, guys. Yes, yeah. this is <laughs> the story of the comics. I'm very excited for it um, because her character, uh, her arc as Thor was not necessarily about her being super powerful Thor. She was also dealing with cancer at the time. I'm wondering if that's going to be something they try to bring in. It, it, it was about basically her power wasn't because she was Thor. Right. She's a powerful person. She is. Yeah. She has strength. Um, she is still strong. She is in the War of the Realms and is awesome in the War of the Realms. A new series started this week called Jane Foster, Valkyrie. She mm. is the new, she is Valkyrie now. Like, it's That's really awesome. great. Uh, so, yeah, very excited for that. So, there was some there was some speculation, including me, of just uh, Natalie Portman's frame. She's just a very petite woman. And to see her as, like, this strong superhero... I was like, oh, it's going to be weird. Like, I feel like that might be a little bit odd to think about. So we'll like, we'll see how that goes. Like to me, it'd be like trying to put Tom Holland in Thor armor. I also think that would look weird. He's a petite guy. Tom Holland is a small guy. Well, yes. If you try to just, here's, here's the thing though. Like we are used to Thor being strong and muscly. Right. But a lot of what he does doesn't require that. He's the god of thunder. Like, to me, though, like, like, uh, did you see Edge of Tomorrow? Uh, yeah. Colloquially known as... Yeah. Uh, Live, Die, Repeat. Repeat. Live, Die, Live, Die, Repeat. Emily Blunt got yoked for that, <laughs> and she looked awesome. Okay. She really did. Like, I I really applauded that, and there's actually an article out, uh, like, they're saying Natalie Portman's going to become, quote, jacked for this. And, and maybe. Uh, who cares? Like, it, a lot of people. A they lot do. A lot of people care. Yeah. <laughs> but... That doesn't mean she's going to be a. It's not like her physical appearance doesn't change the the quality of the character. No, but physical appearance does change how immersed you are in the story. Does it? Yeah. Why? Because that's how our brains process things. What if she? Okay, you're you, what you're doing here is trying to turn uh, Thor Odin's son into a woman, and that's not what happens here. This is an entirely different person. Right. Taking on the mantle, it's more of a concept of Thor. The concept of Thor is a strong person who has who strongly wields a hammer and he's not the god of hammers. Also throws bolt, uh, bolts of lightning. He's not like, the, as we learned from Odin. He's not the god of hammers. But how often does he hit people with lightning compared to hit them with a hammer? He much more often punches or hits with. Well, he hammers. does a lot. Yeah. And like it, it's, he is a physically strong. We'll see how it goes. I have no qualms hero. about that. So if, I have I mean, no qualms. If she was going to be the new Doctor Strange, I'd be like, sure, fine, whatever, that's great. Yeah, there's no physical thing that has to do with Doctor Strange, but Thor is known as the physically strong character, and so I'm, I'm not saying it's going to be bad. I'm just curious. She'll, she'll be a different Thor. Go. Inherently yeah. a different Thor. So, and that, that has been uh, talked about a lot is her frame. And again, so the, the quote has been that she will become, quote, jacked. For I think that all stems from a place of a woman can't be Thor. That's I like, think that's where that all comes from. I, I can say for certain, for me, it's not. Okay. I think there are women who could become very strong and be Thor, but they got Natalie Portman as Jane Foster canonically before yeah. they decided to do this. They brought so her it's back. It's got to be her. But I, I just... Again, and the same thing as Tom Holland. I don't think Tom Holland would make a good Thor either because he's too petite. I think that that's just, there's no physical, there's a physical amount of strength that comes with that character. So. I mean, she's not a super muscly character in the comics. They draw her that way, though. They, I mean, they, I mean we uh, look, we can talk about this all day. Yeah. They're different characters. Yes. It is, she will not be Thor Odin's son. No. She will be Thor, she will just have the same name. And right. a similar armor. Like, she will ha physically look similar, but will be a different person. She's also, like, 5'2". Yeah. It's going to be weird, man. Yeah, okay. Hey, man. It's going to take getting look, used to. It's going to be great. I don't think it will take any getting used to at all. Um, Doctor Strange, uh, Multiverse, Multiverse of, of Madness. Madness. I think that there is a lot of potential to do a lot of great things there. I have one fear and one fear alone. It allows for anything. Um. Yes, I... Still don't think, I think it'll be a bait and switch. Okay. Like my belief uh, for Spider-Man. Right. I think it'll be a bait and switch. I don't think they will be alternate universes with people. I think this will be 
the you know monster energy weird energy realm it'll be I, I don't think they will be copies of our universe that are different i think it'll just be strange otherworldly places mm-hmm. and yeah well because what you're saying is true if there's if the multiverse exists then it it just relieves all tension from anything yeah why don't we just go see that universe now since these characters died here well then they succeeded somewhere else so let's just go there or, or even like no matter who dies universe four two threes version yeah. of that person. also the whole multiverse uh theory doesn't make sense inherently because if every universe exists there's universe if, then there's exists a universe exists where there's none no of them exist and it inherently uh doesn't work right um so anyway yeah i'm guessing that that won't be a thing i'm guessing it'll be like with uh dormammu who was if i remember correctly not in he was in like an alternate dimension when he went and fought him in the first one, but it wasn't like, like earth two, you know, it wasn't like, it was just like a different weird place. And that's what I'm guessing. It'll be yeah, like, yeah. I, I also, <clears throat> my only other fear is I don't want them to fight Thanos again. Right. I they really won't. don't want they, them to fight. They, Thanos they are. Again. I think they are smarter than that. I, I hope so. They're going to be, uh, I'm excited that uh, Wanda, what are, what's her face is going to be in it. She's going to be, play a big role in yeah. that one, which I think makes sense. Yeah, I'm. So I'm too. hoping that there. I mean, it might be kind of like a copy of the first one where a bunch of people die, but um, they could be leading up toward maybe he's training her and she's leading up toward, uh, um, House of M. Mm-hmm. Like we could see that start here, so that'd be cool. Uh, Black Widow has been confirmed. Yes, as far as I know, to take place after Civil War. Really? Yes. I thought it was going to be a prequel. That's what. Well, I mean, technically it is. But, because it's not current right now. Okay. But, yeah, that's what I thought, too. And I don't even know if that's actually confirmed, like, by Marvel. I'm not sure where that confirmation is from. Right. That's, I saw an article yesterday. Um, but, I it'll be fun, I guess. It'll just be a, a cool spy thriller, probably. Yeah. That, that one's one where, especially if it's going to be during our timeline yeah. that we're aware of. It's just going to be another story. Before, and we know what happens after. And so that little thread right there is not going to be a huge it'll just, consequence. Yeah, it'll feel like issue number 126. Right. Doesn't exactly. really matter. It's just a side story. I want it to be a prequel because I want to see Scarlet Witch be not good and then change. Yeah. To be recruited. That, and, that's what I yeah. wanted too. I want to see that happen. So we'll see about that. What was the other? Oh, there are Eternals, and, Eternals and, Shang-Chi. and Shang-Chi. So here's what I'll say about Shang-Chi. I know nothing about Shang-Chi. I know nothing about the Legend of the Ten Rings. I know about the Legend of the Five Rings. <laughs> That's what it is. There's just two, twice. It just happens two times. You just play a couple games. There's a multiverse. It. Yes. So. <laughs> I know. Here's Shang Chi right now, uh, and I know all this just because of the War of the Realms. But he is currently um, part of the Agents of Atlas, which is a um, pan Asian uh, fight uh, team, which uh, was a really good story as well in War of the Realms. He's basically Marvel's Bruce Lee, times a hundred. Doesn't okay. have any extra powers. He's just an incredible like okay martial artist. Really, okay. <clears throat> as far as I can tell. All right, so he's the karate kid. Yeah, then. he's he, no he he was literally created to basically be Bruce Lee. They're oh they they're, were like Bruce Lee's popular. Let's make Bruce Lee. Karate Kid is a character in DC oh. Comics, and he's from the the year three thousand. <laughs> in the year three thousand, he uh, he know knows and has mastered every martial art ever created in the history of man. <laughs> well, I thought that was Batman. And so, well, that's that, yes, but that's twentieth century. Oh, he's thirtieth century. Okay, and so there's actually that's what martial time, arts do. They change. There's a time when they fought, and <laughs> Batman lost, but just barely. Okay, great. Uh, whatever, <laughs> I don't care. Yeah, that's gonna be fun. Um, I I'm hoping it'll be some. I hope there will be a lot of like wire foo, and I want it to be like a, a crouching tiger, hidden dragon yeah. kind of like, uh, kung fu movie, uh, instead of just here's this new hero fighting bad guy. Like I want it to be a specific genre film. Yeah, I I'm hmm. I just I, literally I don't know anything about them. Yeah, so, that's fair. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, speaking of th- something I don't know about, Eternals. I got nothing. I have no idea. The Eternals are supposed to be like these ultra powerful beings. They're supposed to be. Yeah, I did do. I I read like a Wikipedia 
uh, paragraph. And it's just like, they are ultra beings who fight the Celestials. So I'm guessing it'll be a way long time ago in the past, they fight the Celestials. I am over Angelina Jolie. I I really am. Sure, I don't know. I haven't seen a movie with her in, in a long time maleficent movies i haven't seen she's fine in them yeah i just i don't know I'm, we'll see yeah we'll see we'll see how it goes um but we've been talking for a very long time a really long time so i think it's about time to call it quits there's probably other stuff we could talk about right but, but we hit the things that we really want to talk yeah, about yeah, yeah. and the things that we know about right again we didn't say much about the eternals or shang chi because we don't really know them yeah sure but Thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for your support. Um, let us know what you think about the San Diego Comic-Con announcements. Let us know specifically what you think about um, the Marvel announcements like yeah. we went through. Uh, thank you guys again. And always remember that save games, save lives. Bye.